chairman of uh, Georgetown University. His um, presentation is about negotiation, visualized sexuality through online stance taking and based communication. So welcome. everyone, thank you so much for coming and thank you for having me. So my name is Ping, I'm from Georgetown University. Today, we're going to look at online comics and I'm going to show you why they are important in the negotiation of racialized sexuality. So at this point, you might be wondering, what is racialized sexuality? So to answer that question, let's start with another question. So what is sexual racism? Can I have someone, one or two, uh, tell me what you think it means. Maybe an example. Yes. So, um, no black, no Asian, uh -huh. no black, no Well, maybe not black too, but yeah. Yes. Or fetishizing certain uh, uh, stereotypical attributes of certain races. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Thank you both. Uh, exactly. So, um, these uh, looking at the intersection of race and sex, sexual practices, um, and the, ex the fetishization or exclusion of an entire racial or ethnic group. So here's a definition by Stanford: the sexual rejection of the racial minority, the conscious attempt on the part of the majority to prevent an interracial cohabitation. So this was back in. 1979. Uh, wow. Things have definitely changed a little bit, especially with new technology, but the idea remains. Um, like uh, the fetishization and also the use of verbiage like you no know, black, no Asian. Uh, these uh, expressions come with this new uh, sexual practice like uh, dating apps, mm -hmm. uh, dating websites. Uh, but some may argue that, well, is that not a personal preference? Um, it's very common, but this also calls into the question that the same sexual practice uh, from a social constructive, constructivist or constructionist view does not always have the same meaning. It is rather dependent on a kind of discourse about sex at a given time and place. So here we're confronted by an online ideological debate uh, when, while we are looking at the same phenomenon. Uh, there are different stances, different opinions. Uh, so online comment is exactly a place for different opinions to clash with each other. Um, so underlying my study is the idea that sexuality, even in a digital age remains a social construct that is built on constant negotiation. So sexuality, rather than something that is just out there, uh, rather than it's not entirely biological, it is something uh, socially constructed. It produces discourse around it. Uh, it has a lot of it, it has a lot to do with um, how we think of it and uh, how we talk about it, and also more related to. Uh, in the online spaces, this online negotiation is achieved discursively through an intricate process of stance taking that entails evaluation, positioning, and aligning in computer mediated communication or CFC. So, here I'm arguing that when we participate in the, this discussion in an online forum, this process, negotiation, negotiating, whether it is sexual racism or not, is achieved discursively. And a theoretical construct that I'm adopting here is called a stance triangle. And why online comments? So linguists have pointed out that the written language constitutes the primary resource for creating social reality in text-based CMC. And you might be wondering, but how does that happen? Reality is reality. Um, 
well, again, a more social uh, constructivist view. Reality shapes and is shaped by the way we think of things and the way we talk about things. So Potter uh, points out that reality enters human practices by way of the categories and descriptions that are part of those practices. It is constituted in one way or another as people talk it, write it, and argue it. So looking back to the question earlier, what is sexual racism or what is racialized sexuality? Uh, it is. It really depends on how people look at it, how people describe it. Uh, like we have sexual racism on one hand and personal preference on the other. So, uh, as an analyst uh, doing this study, I use the term racialized sexuality to not to take side, not to side with any uh, one of it. So the theoretical construct here is the stance triangle and uh, quoting from the author who first proposed this model. In taking a stance, the stance taker evaluates an object, positions and subject, usually the self, and align with other subjects. So here is the triangle, the triangular model right over here. And uh, let's try to keep that in mind because we will use this idea to examine in the comments we will see shortly. And uh, so, for example, if uh, I am the subject one, I might say, oh, I have a Samsung smartphone and I love it. It's the best phone, smartphone ever. So by doing that, I'm evaluating my phone, uh, which is the stance object in this case, and position myself as uh, a Samsung lover. And uh, another person might disagree, saying, no, iPhone is the best. <laughs> And therefore, evaluating uh, iPhone as a better smartphone um, and saying you know, something like Samsung smartphone did explode. Um, so therefore, evaluating the stance object negatively. In this case, subject one and subject two uh, will have a divergent alignment in between. Whereas if the two person agree with each other, there will be a convergent alignment. So quickly recap this idea, uh, the triangle. The first part is evaluation, the process whereby a stance taker orients to an object, like the Samsung smartphone, a stance and characterizes it as having some specific quality or value. Positioning is the act of situating a social actor, in this case it's me and the other person, with respect to responsibility for stance for invoking social cultural value. Lastly, but not least, alignment is the act of calibrating the relationship between two stances and by implication to stance takers. And something to bear in mind when it comes to alignment, it is not a positive binary, uh, it is not a positive negative binary. Instead, it represents a point along a continuous scale of range of values. So it is better characterized as conversion or divergent to varying degrees. Now, this is the data. Um, I look at the comment section with all the comments, uh, about over 1,700 comments, uh, replying to an online article written about uh, sexual racism as a problem. Uh, and uh, of course, people have different opinions about it. And uh, this is a segment of it. And because this is a qualitative study that I'm showing you today, we will look at only the first thread. So we have different users, they can leave a comment, and also this grayish part uh, is where commenters can quote either from an another comment or from the article. And that's the comment part. And on the right, you can see that this upward arrow uh, is a recommendation feature in this comment section. It's like like on Facebook. So a comment can get a lot of recommendation and that will push that comment up. And commenters can reply to each other by tagging the person, the previous commenter. So you can see that this, in this case, it's Lovelight replying to Ultralightning. 
and apparently you can also share a comment. And before we jump into the analysis, uh, some notes about digital affordances or the digital uh, features online. So functional uh, affordances uh, in Hutchby's definition are functional and relational aspects which frame while not determining the uh, possibility for agentic action in relation to an object. So all of the features that we just saw, replying, commenting, quoting, or even recommending, uh, are different types of affordances, but they are not necessarily constraining the things we can do with these features, the things we can do online, but instead uh, users can also can always come up with uh, innovative new ways of using these affordances to achieve the purposes of uh, what they intend to do. So here we will look at two affordances in particular. One is tagging. It displays connection with others because the person who is tagged will get a notification of someone just wrote a reply as a means to gain increased attention. And it also contributes to cross-turn addressivity because it explicitly uses a username to select the addressee. And it is instrumental to maintain CMC coherence because, as you can see, there are a lot of people commenting simultaneously. So how do you know that this person is talking to me and not the other person is to attack you? The other feature that I'm looking at is Chloe. It creates illusion of adjacency in that it incorporates and just exposes a portion of two terms. So it's like creating a dialogue, like two people talking at the same time, even though the two comments are not adjacent to each other. And uh, here I pointed out that these affordances create connections necessary for online sense taking. Uh, they create when a commenter tag or quote another commenter, uh, this commenter is creating a connection uh, that is necessary for creating an alignment. So building on that connection uh, is the possibility of alignment and therefore taking a different stance or a similar stance. So here we have the first common in the first discussion thread. But for lightning says, uh, first quote um, the article, the author of the article, saying, on dating sites and apps, profiles abound that says no Asians and no black people, casually excluding entire ethnic groups. It's like a bastardized, no dog, no blacks, no Irish signs. And then on lightning says, it's not though, is it? People stating and or sexual preferences are equal opportunity and they don't have to be. On dating sites, people aren't being excluded from public communal space, as with the OPUP sites. They are being ruled out by that particular site user, which is that person's prerogative. So here you can see that first, by quoting the original re author of this article, Ultralight being position uh, self in relation or even in opposition to the author's point of view. Uh, by using a different uh, term here. So Afro-Latin doesn't use the word sexual racism. Instead, uh, the commenter uses dating or sexual preferences. So that is the first um, uh, stance marker in this comment, in the first example. So bring back to that bring back that triangular model, we can see that this is how we fit in, how we place the two, um, the commenter on one side and the author, the article author on the other side, and they evaluate the stance object, the use, the verbiage of no Asian, no black, um, that is at issue here. So one is uh, being evaluated as a personal preference, uh, and sexual racism on the other. So therefore, we have two, uh, we have divergent and a, a divergent alignment between the two subjects. And tagging, as we probably, uh, 
familiar. Uh, it is often used to disagree. Uh, as we might know that in online comments, online forums, is a really polarized and uh, polarized environment. So as you can see, there's a lot of disagreements going on. So here, Love Light and Afro Chick, they both, uh, both uh, Afro Chick, they both uh, tag ultra liking to express uh, an opposite view. First, Love Light says it's racism, and we need to start calling it that. And again, by using the different term, use different terminology, uh, this marks the different stance. And the need to construction, uh, it indicates the deontic stance, like calling for action. It's, it serves as a political statement. Avril Schick, on the other hand, says that's dis disingenuous. You can have racial preferences and online dating platform. We all do without stating it explicitly. So here, the adjective functions as a stance marker uh, showing different evaluation of that stance object. And, but here, in this case, you can see that Apple Shake doesn't uh, say that it is a form of racism. But instead, Apple Shake used the term racial preferences. Uh, so you can see that uh, how different stances or alignments are not just yes or no binary. But here, Apple Shake, uh, the counter, is sort of acknowledging that, yes, you can have racial preferences, you can have preferences, but you don't have to say it, you don't have to spell it out. The next we will see stance accretion. Uh, tagging contributes to what Du Bois calls stance accretion, with the new one, new stance responding to the previous one linked by the particular feature. So the two here, you can see, Andy77 says in reply to Love Light, no, what the liking is right, and you're wrong, with no extra or additional explanation, just you're right, you're wrong. And uh, the, the reason why this is made possible is because tagging. Um, so by tagging, uh, all of the stances are already built in there. So no extra explanation is needed. And also you can see that uh, Claire London in replies to Andy77 saying, ah, no, let me clear this up for you, and using the same structure, construction, ultra lighting and you are both wrong. Uh, again, this shows that stance can uh, accrue over time uh, and across comments. And then we'll see creating conversion alignment. Tagging itself is relatively neutral, serving only to link comments and build connection. So to make it convergent, uh, to create a convergent alignment, we need uh, this course marker, such as the first one we see quite bright or liking. Sexual preference is ruthless and can be constrained by any notions of correctness. And uh, Ziggy the Hamster says exactly, I've seen many profiles specifically says would like to meet black male female so to show that I share the same sentiments I take the same stance uh, this course marker is needed and necessary in this case and lastly we'll see quoting is usually used with contrastive uh, so in these two examples we see uh, there are quotations there, there are quotes but they are followed by uh, contrastive, like in the first one, but that's different. Or why not be explicit about it, though? Uh, so the quotes hold the previous commenter accountable for what they say, creating a dialogue there, and also sets up an opposition between the two, in, the two commenters in relation to each other. So to conclude, Tagging contributes to what Dubois calls the stance accretion, with the new one responding to the previous one. And quoting helps the marks the previous stance to show contrast by constructing dialogue and holding another commenter accountable for what has been said. And why does that important? Why does that matter? Because different online stances toward the racialization of sexual attraction suggest that although the internet and affordances enable dialogic interaction, they can also encourage the negotiation of sexuality in the digital age that frames racialized sex desires as two opposing 
social reality. So with uh, convergent alignment on one hand, and uh, uh, agreeing that yes, this is sexual racism, and on the other hand, we have no, this is not racist, racist racism. This is merely a personal preference. We can see that how two social two alternative social realities are constructed through stance taking and using these different uh, linguistic features. <laughs>